Welcome to the abyss. And the last time on Disco Elysium, I puked twice. Bubbles! No, oh, we uh, try to investigate a body, but about the future of the government, read your mind using radio technology. <gasps> Buedero, Buederio culture. From us freedom men roaming upstream. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. It takes willpower to even read the author's name. Jan Quas from Iguania. Yeah, okay. This is a book about Pate. And on the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. And this book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. Ooh. Well, I peeped twice, and after trying to investigate a body, it did not go well, but I have volumetrically compressed my shit. So it should be together. And with that, let's see if... Uh, this uh, corpse will reveal its secrets. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Okay. It's a 58% chance. Our shit is compressed. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty with your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting you stand in it hmm. do they always do that they do after seven days yes we are deep in decomposition here the man before you is naked but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots his skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Yeah, that's in the spectrum boots here. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? They're armor. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500 VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Hmm. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more arm after seven days. We should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. Maybe he was just wearing these pinks. And there is no rest of the armor. No. He must have worn something precious underneath his clothes. They've removed all his clothes to get to it. They did not just trip him for the putrid rags. Hmm. What if they told him to strip before they hung him? To demean him? They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre. The Mazda. The Besmertis and the like. This one still has his underpants. <laughs> Fucking talking about underpants. The material looks... Out of place here. It is. It's expensive. Uh, the lieutenant draws a line in the condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Cut 
ka-ching, baby. Wait. No. That's just a lot, I take it. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. Mr. Gart implied he was security personnel for the Harbour Company. This confirms my own assumptions. Initial support? Report? No. These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Let's knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint, organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates, until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Maybe we try to pull the boot off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! The lieutenant's voice is sharp. He looks at you with the boot under your arm. Pig's gonna pull his head off. Oh, this is a bad idea, isn't it? You're going to pull his head off. Do it, Homo! Uh, I'm going to pull his head off, right? Yes, that's what I say. You'll compromise the coroner's case if you do. So please, don't. What are you trying to achieve, anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? Let's see... Let's see. Bad centimeter, which you can talk research with their weaknesses. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is advanced enemy technology. We should conduct research into their weakness. This is not the enemy. This is the deceased, the victim, in a murder investigation. Better safe than sorry. That doesn't mean anything, detective. Besides... Lieutenant taps on the boot. There's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? They're weak. You're sure there's a way to peel them off. But first, the body needs to be down. And second... It would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Yeah. Fuck honor. Sounds the like a plan. Anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice, nice and cracky. What's gonna happen to the boots then? Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? Back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength, the can use for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town, and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. Yeah, yeah. Like in a circus. For transporting black spotted giraffes. Uh, no. More like in uh, Harbour. Like the one just east of here. I get a sense they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. Hmm. I'm assuming dock workers from the harbor did it. 
The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? My past has undergone total annihilation. Nothing remains. My mother, the love of my life. Certainly not a briefing. Okay, you should ask me for one the first moment we get. They sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. How do they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle tying the belt to the branch above. Hmm. Did they climb up the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. He makes a pulling motion. Back off. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Let's inspect the tats. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. The concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Oh. Well, that's sad. <laughs> is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars? I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messenian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized, somehow. As if someone left that most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. Oh. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Uh, what's that? A true get sunshine. Mini. An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampoules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. Oh. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... And this gets pretty bright. A sound. A shrill flash. Followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. In case we need it. <sighs> oh, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. <sighs> cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. Interesting. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Right. Can I have it? I should look at it later, without the corpse smell. Sure, just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glossy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. 
Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curdled meat there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below, inside, an expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. You don't say. This man enjoyed the moment of his death. Why do you think so? It's an intuition. Okay. The lieutenant notes something, marks something in his notebook. I am less skeptic about this hunch, he thinks, than I was of the supernatural premonitions that overtook you at the trash container. He then covers his nose again. Tell me who you are, dead man. I'm gone. Oh, we're going back and forth now, are we? Where have you come? Into the wow pile yonder. And where is that, pray tell? In the past. Way out west. I can see you're gone. But who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now. But who are you when you were alive? Killer, a motherfucker, and a killer. Well, I have another question for you, killer. Go ahead, Kobo. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. The fuck? It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid stops bubbling on his lips. <gasps> Imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah. Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. <laughs> Rooney is obviously not who I am. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. No. It can't be, Harry. I refuse. Good for you. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in, Brother Kobo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eye. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? I don't have anything else to do. This case is all I have. I'm all you have? Then you truly lost it all, brother. You let the world drag it all away from you. And what it left, you pissed away. And here we are. I hate you. You stink. And you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? A baby affected with harlequinism? You sure wrinkled
gold out of that one, Coppolini. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. So, you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? Wait, wait. What is all erotic auto-asphyxiation? Captain Corpo Dromo, I fear we are drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. Yeah. Look, am I done with you? Oh yeah, I am. Enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Okay. Clearly, that did not line up. I should be saying is, you can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Humor yourself with my harlequin features. Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. Create associations. Remind yourself of your mortality, Coppolopo. Clearly, I don't do it as well, but, you know. There's a reason someone else was hired to do it, and not me. Let's, uh, squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green. In the cold spring air. Um, Squint and Kim, why am I doing this? How should I know why you are squinting, officer? His face and hands are pink. Those two. The rest is greenish. Oh. You are trying to assess lividity. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color, coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? I think he's dead. I agree. There are crow's feet in his eyes. He's laughing silently. Totally dead. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. I don't know what to think. Truly. What do you think? I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet. And his neck. He points to his fatted chin. The noose acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. Cover your nose. Something is coming out of him. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck are you saying? Talking about shit. <laughs> uh, maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death. Maybe. He doesn't really want to dwell on it too long. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means he fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. Back off and catch a breath. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. 
He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. So how do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. He stops to think and checks his notes. We've been thorough. Do you have a plan for getting him down? Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Can't someone else do it? Someone else? You mean, like, the police? I mean someone who's below detective. Someone like a paid garbage man? Or a cleaning crew? I have bad news for you. That is a detective. Oh, shit. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. We could saw the branch? Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. We are not getting him down already. Not getting him down is a task that's already accomplished. Sadly, it's not our job to keep him up there, but to get him down. I don't really want to pull his head off. How do you plan to get him down then? With social sensibility? Are you going to educate him down? Oh, fuck you. Do you have light? You know what? Maybe we could shoot him down. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? Um, just shoot the belt. The bullet will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Okay. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the cooler with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. <sighs> Take the shot, lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? Someone dies? Too late. I'll blow his head off. <laughs> Whoops. Take it! Take the shot! Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Don't say anything. He's gonna fucking miss! The chick's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Hmm. A lot of things were wrong with that shot. The fellow's test was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. He feels bad about it. About his eyes, mostly. Just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno is not fucking handicapped, is he? Try again, maybe? No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. He looks around at the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. God damn it, get your shit together! Remain collegial, officer. It was an honest mistake. And I will not repeat it. Fine. Well, what now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. You know, you don't feel like too bad of a shot yourself. I can try to shoot him down myself. It's bad as it is. 
as shooting firearms like punks here. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't hit the victim. I'm gonna need your gun for this. They only have one gun. Oops. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Officer, why do we only have one gun? He asked, carefully loading his pistolet. <laughs> Remember when I told you I didn't have my badge or uniform with me when I woke up? I didn't have my gun either. That is even more unfortunate than the badge. You need to contact your station about it as soon as possible. Try not to lose this one, please. We're not off to a good start. This missing gun business is making your hand tremble. <laughs> Just take the gun. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. You've held this, a P9 armistice, before. At some point, it probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable, like you never laid it down. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your mouth? At least you won't miss. It's a 42% chance. Close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, slick, with the falling rain. The corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying! You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? Something interesting you can do, if you don't know, is you can level up in the middle of things. For instance, a hand-eye coordination. We can upgrade it right now, with our point. Fifty-eight percent. Let's fucking do it. Ah, shit. A plume of smoke erupts from the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. With your ears still ringing, you lower the weapon to see what happens. Whoops. You missed the belt, but hit the corpse straight in the chest. Bits of ribcage protrude from the skin. No blood. Only a murky sludge dripping down his belly. The sudden stink makes your eyes water. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry! I knew it! What a molko! Ask for another shot. You'll get it with the next one. The goddamn light reflected off some window. Surely. <sighs> Can you reload it, please? I need another shot! The cadaver is already compromised bad enough. We don't have to make it worse. No, oh, I can make it fucking worse, all right. It came out wrong. You made it sound like you're some sort of roulette addict looking for a fix. Ask again. More control this time. Please, Kim. There is silence. Vitupa wants to fuck up again bad. Monka, Vitupa, what is that? What the hell kind of words are those? The song of my people, asshole! Don't provoke her. Teddy takes the sidearm from you, then holsters it. Shot him in the chest! What a fucking idiot! It's not the gun's fault you can't shoot. It's your pig hands. Uh, pigs don't have hands. They have, like, fucking hooves or something. Kuno has hands. Kuno can shoot that shit down for you. <laughs> That's preposterous. I'm not giving you the gun, kid. That's preposterous! What are you fucking hell? We still need to get him down somehow. His turn is growing tired now. The stench makes him turn away from the corpse. But how? The bad way. The way I didn't want us to. <sighs> By asking the harbor for help. They have the tools and the men. If they put him up there, they can take him down too. 
Let's get to it then. I already saw one way to get in. We can just go there. But why do that when we can instead go into here? Hello, trash can. Oh, wait. It's gonna take a second. Right. What the hell? Didn't we, uh, perceive the keys? I am confused. Armor, getting down the body, blah blah blah, victim tattoos, getting the hangman. Bow down, paper damage, open trash container, yeah. Tommy, you can use. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that was weird. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Oh, I was really hoping we could just shoot it down, it would have been badass, but no. Open the padlock with the key. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe I should. Don't tell me what to do. Maybe you shouldn't. Of course you should. This is your time to shine, hobo cop. Dive into that dumpster for extra content. Well, but still, didn't I just have a premonition that there's something in there? There is. But you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. Open it. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the boxes of cartons. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. You've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows. The methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. Used to what? Tumster diving? No. Searching for evidence in the trash. Eh, sounds the same. Good practice for dumpster diving. See? Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below, and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. How about we pick up the rags? Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Weird pause. And unpause. How to open up my window, because it's really hot. And I need my bed to be cold. Need it to be cold. Continue. The victim's clothes. Cadaver in odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Hmm. Drop them in here, officer. The lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pockets. Pocket. Bag the trousers. These are marked blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or empty. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Bag it! This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. Just garbage. That's all I think. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. <laughs> no, no, no. We need to ask those kids who put them there. The fuck's he on about, kids? Do you hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Yeah, whatever. You think someone from the Whirling might have been involved? 
Maybe. Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Okay. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. As well such dress. Such the food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. Oh, you just skipped over the top part. Okay. Well, it seems like they have some bugs they might have skipped over, but that's fine. Officer, is that your paperwork? <laughs> I don't know what this is. It is. Look, the plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. Miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? <laughs> I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore. So, I threw it away. Well. He doesn't know what to say. His eyes express a rare condolence. Then, he picks it up. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains. Just to be sure someone has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. <sighs> okay. I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? No. Hobo cop time. Also... Kinda wish I had gone to the trash first. Maybe could have gotten two points to shoot the corpse down, but whatever! Wow. An armistice caliber 50 knock cannon. Half wrapped in paper tissues. So shiny. What's a knock cannon? It's a giant rifle, and it's very expensive. Not as expensive as that fat string of pearls snaking around the rotten banana peels, however. And it's that Cordon Electrics preamp with Electra F2 tubes. It is. That catches quite a price. We're talking 12,000. Easy. Unless you're into hi fi yourself. Fuck that, I sell it! No, you won't. Because none of those things are real. They're not actually in there. All you see is food waste and crisp wrappings. A cruel jest. There must be something. All you see is a broken mug with a racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Then it briefly glances at the mug to return to sight to the trash. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing of the least. I think we got it all. Hell yeah. But something that I want to do. We have the thingies. We'll question guards about it. Uh, but first, I want to level up my volition, right? Let's see. No, suggestion. That's what I want to level up. I want to talk to her. So, suggestion. Level it. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? No. I need to know what we're missing. And why this is familiar. You have absolutely no idea. Familiar? You must have forgotten something you heard again. Why? Fine, bye. Oh my god. Really? 72% chance? Well, that's the thing about this game. Loss is, um... Failure is... It happens. 
and you just kind of got to take it. Kuno! Fuck, does Kuno care? The boy turns to you. He doesn't care. Oof, 20% chance. Let's see, uh... I have more questions about the crime scene. Yeah? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? The dead man's clothes were in the trash container. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. Huh. I need to know. It could be a lead in the investigation. Someone may have tampered with the murder scene. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. You'd have to be blind not to notice the giant white letters F A L N running down his trousers. <sighs> Alright. Entertain me. What's so great about these pants? Cause you're not gonna tell me shit else, I imagine. Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in me over by scientists. Pants scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket to give you a quick peek at the plastic wrap pants. They are graphic black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Wait, wait, wait. I asked you what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around. Except for that f***ed up there. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent. But his expression couldn't say, I told you so. Any louder. Well, I might be interested in the pants. They do look a little stylish. All right, Piggo. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's gonna steal all your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno and C don't trust you. Can't do business without trust. Oh, there's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. There's a little mug in the trash. Show him the mug. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? <laughs> Let's see. Yes. Does this quaint? Better not take it out of its historical context mug have anything to do with it. Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you picked it after the mug fucker? Cause he's the clothes fucker? I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tampered with the crime scene. Clean some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat-down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. He knows an approval. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno, f Yeah? Get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo! Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face. What's in the greenhouse over there? Don't know. Keep that gardener used to work there. Wait, what do you mean, used to? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit's nothing to Kuno. You mean the young woman by whirling in rags? That gardener? Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. He looks you in the eye and nods as if agreeing with himself. Yeah, her. Fuck the ladder. I got other shit to talk about. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno, I found your shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. 
How the fuck did you get in? <laughs> I phase shifted through the roofing material. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. He says to himself, then turns to you. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Yeah, look, the pig head, for example. What's up with that? How's that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. <sighs> cool pig head. I liked it. I got one too. This one. It's shit. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? I found a plate covered with powder residue. Know nothing about it. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old. But you could have that sparkle in your eyes. What's with the tube of Magnus Solum, Kuno? It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? He looks at you like you just pointed at the sun and asked what it was. You could use some. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. Do you fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game? Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker. And you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. <sighs> Come on. It's just magnesium. Don't miss the fight. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. He looks to you, eyes bulging. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. <laughs> I didn't know that's my coat. Could I get into the harbor from the roof? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly pig. So, is that it? Easy. Not for you, pig. Kuno can't wait to see you get all scared and shit your pants. Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat pants. <sighs> I've heard enough of this. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Maybe it'll work. Who knows? He's on your crime scene, bossing you around. And he's been here for some time, too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. Hmm. Hey, Kuno. Think you can turn the Kuno down for a moment? Let's talk like normal people. Trying to fuck at the Kuno? Trying to fuck at me? Trying to fuck? Kuno only gets higher. It's faster, faster, faster. Can't take the Kuno. Stay out of the reactor. Kuno gonna fuck you up. Up, up, up. Normal is not what we got here. You've got to work with what you have for now. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Well, we fucked that right up, didn't we? I haven't succeeded. Oh, well, I exceeded the um, uh, island empire, but nothing else. Well, then I'll end the episode there and. Just go cry in a corner because I suck and shit. Bye.